Wes, obviously um, a tough night for or a tough challenge for Gaff on his first game back. But um, what do you, how do you feel like he did tonight? Uh, I think he did pretty well actually. And you know, I told him after the game, I know that's tough. Um, you know, guard a guy like that, essentially um, single coverage, and that was kind of by design. And at times we mixed a few things in, but we know that team's making threes at a high volume on top of being able to score the way they can score in the post, in the paint, um, that game can really get away from you. So the fact you hold them to eight threes, minimize that part of it, you know, puts whomever's guarding Nicola pretty much um, in single coverage you know, with limited help. And he's a, he's a tough cover, very efficient. And you know, we see it from night to night, but to be able to you know, withstand some of that, make some plays um, and just stay with it, not, you know, get distracted or get discouraged, I think was great. Um. You, uh, 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 for the second night in the row, the bench did um, a good job, especially in the third and fourth quarters. What are you liking from them lately? Landry was really active yes. kind of earlier than that, but um, I think they got it to nine in the fourth. Yeah, you know, I th him, Bilal, I thought had another good game. Um, you know, Marvin coming off the bench was solid. Um, you know, to, to their credit, they, they just bring that energy and that pop, you know, and it's, it's tough. They've had some stretches where they haven't played well, um, and I you know, had to go back early to the starters. So it's kind of a... You know, read the read the flow a little bit. Uh, last two games, they've given us that you know a uh, bit of a spark. Uh, so we need that you know every night. Who's back in Atlanta? Mentioned he hasn't been playing up to his own standards. Um, his scoring has dipped a little bit this month. What do you attribute that to? Well, I think um, you know some of that was a string of games outside of these last two. Um, the way he was being guarded, and it I think affected you know overall options. You know, took away some of his uh, easier looks. You know, teams start, I don't want to give it away, but teams were, were covering him a certain way that, um, you know, takes away some of his strengths. I'll, I'll say that. Um, but I think, you know, to his credit, he just continues to still, you know, find ways to be effective, you know, play downhill, try to make plays for others, um, get into the paint, get to the line when he can. But uh, we know going in, Jordan, Kuz are going to get the two best um, perimeter defenders, wing defenders for the most part. Um, you know, Ty at times is going to see size and length on the ball. So um, that's just you know the way the way it is. You know, we would match the same way. Try to put our best defenders on the on a team's marquee players. Coach, by the end of the, uh, the third quarter, I think uh, Kuz and Poole had combined for like 13 points or something like that. And I know you always say it doesn't come down to one guy or two guys, but when those two guys specifically struggle to get going, how hard is it to get the offense to to catch fire? Well, I think it's, um, you know, catch fire, I think, is, is easy when, you know, you're free-flowing. And obviously, we, can, we get out and run, you know, whether it's after makes. And obviously, you get stops and run. I think we had a stretch there. We were very good uh, because we were able to get stops. Um, when they were taking the ball out of the basket, it's, it's, you're playing against a set defense. And, you know, once again, they've got, you know, two pretty good defenders on them. And, and I know that team is locked into defending those two at a high rate. Um, you got to rely a little bit more on the ball movement and find find avenues to crack that shell, get downhill, um, ignite a, a trigger somewhere, whether that's out of pick and roll or a driving kick, and that opens up kind of those windows you look for. So it's not going to always be the guy who is accustomed to getting the shot. He may have to create the shot for others. And uh, Bilal had a career-high four blocks tonight. What did he do well mechanically? Well, I thought he did a pretty good job defending without fouling. You know, really got into the ball, um, and it's hard because there's – Pick and roll after pick and roll, handoff, a lot of two-man actions. Um, and he just did a really good job of using his, his length, uh, making plays late, you know, whether that's at the rim or contesting late. Whether you block it or not, you know, it's a deterrent. And uh, to his credit, he did that without fouling. And uh, with Bagley and Gafford now both healthy and both playing decent minutes, Patrick Baldwin's minutes might go down a little bit. What do you foresee his role how, how it's going to shift over the next few games with both of those other guys healthy. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll read it. You know, there, there's still going to be opportunities at times, um, depending on the matchups, depending on the game. Um, you know, Marvin obviously has played well these three games. Then there, there's opportunities for Patrick if, you know, the coverage is right, uh, certain matchups are right. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Going back to Blaw's defense, um, can you talk specifically about the job that he and Denny did on Jamal Murray? He had a, a tough shooting night, um, and it looked like those two specifically were forcing him into a lot of tough looks. Yeah, you know, I, I took Denny out, and Denny was doing really, really well, and I stayed with Bilal because, well, you know, once again, Bilal was playing well. Um, same type mentality, just don't, don't give him anything easy. Um, both guys are 
physical enough, and Jamal's strong. I mean, he's uh, built up his body. He's able to kind of create some separation, pretty shifty. So to see Denny, you know, guard guys like that and, and fare well is a positive. Um, certainly a challenge for Bilal as a rookie, but you're guarding one of the best, uh, you know, perimeter players in the league. Um, and I thought tonight he did well. Continuing with uh, Bilal, um, whether by design or just how it kind of played out on the court, he spent time guarding Porter Jr., uh, Jokic at, at one point, Reggie Jackson, and I believe Aaron Gordon. I guess why do you trust him to be able to guard all those positions, and how do you think he did well, I today? think he did well. I mean, it's there's certain things where, you know, he, he's got to learn, and we'll clean those up, and that's just being out there and being – having the experience of going through it. Um, but to have a crack at all those different types of players um, is only going to help him down the line. It's going to help us, his ability to um, be kind of a Swiss Army knife and defensive stopper on a lot of levels, on the ball, off the ball, uh, guarding you know the catch and shoot, the guys who are moving quite a bit. It's a little different than guarding 30 or 40 pick and rolls in a possession. That's different than guarding a guy who wants to be physical and post you up. So learning all those things and having the experience of doing it all in one game, um, I think that's going to expedite his maturation. First game back, how excited are you here to hear Wes say you got Nicola in single coverage? Uh, I was, <laughs> I mean, I was good, you know. I knew kind of how my night was going to be, so I just really just kind of like put my hard hat on and just went out and just took a step up to the challenge. That was the main thing. Just came out and just did the best I could pretty much. Obviously, he had a season high, but what do you feel like you did well? West was complimentary. Um, pretty much, I felt like I came out and just you know, I tried to just have like maximum level of aggression. Pretty much, at the end of the day, just you know, Jokic he's a big guy, and just trying to match his physicality was kind of like one of the main things that I wanted to really just go out and kind of see if I can improve on. You know, time and time again, when I've guarded him, there's been you know times where it's like you know he's just pretty much just banging and banging in there. So it's just like, you know, trying to just take that step and just match that physicality is something that I really wanted to just really work on tonight, you know. And at the end of the day, sooner or later they're going to let me do it. <laughs> Jeff, what does Marvin Bagley bring to the team? I mean, he brings he brings a lot. You know, he brings another lob thread. He brings a big that can stretch the floor too, you know, make – make offense for himself and he just comes down and he just works you know he puts a hard hat on too and he comes off the bench and when he was when he first got here and when he was starting I was just watching he was just out there just being himself you know just doing the things Marvin Bagley does which you know I'm excited to have him on the team and just really just seeing him just strive and do the things that he's been doing. Wes has not said anything about this but last year there was a little bit of lineup experimentation with both you and Chris Tapps starting mm -hmm. would that be something that maybe you would think about being excited about with Bagley? Oh yeah of course. You know, excited. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's like a one-two punch at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. I would for sure, you know, like to experiment something with that just because of the simple fact that it's just going to be something that's going to be tough to kind of like adjust to, I would say, if we do it the right way, most definitely. As uh, Ava said, you, you returned to a very difficult assignment. Mm -hmm. What was your mindset just coming back, you know, instead of taking – one more game off. Even though I was close, don't foul out. Um, that was just the main thing. You know, any time that I've guarded Nicola, I've always fouled out. Or I always was like, at least like tonight, one foul call away. So that was just kind of like the main thing, is just trying to keep frustration as one of the things that stayed away from this game. Because I needed all mental focus to just be on trying to find some type of way to stop him at the end of the day. And with, with that being easier said than done, you know, I just came out and I felt like that, in all honesty, I took a step in the right direction for sure. But just uh, how about the, the mindset of kind of helping the team and mm -hmm. even though it was going to be a tough night, you know, mm -hmm. coming back from a, a tough injury? Um, Really just mindset was just the same as any other game, pretty much. Come out and just try to set the tone. That's the main thing. Set the tone on the glass, set the tone offensively, defensively, wherever I need to set the tone, that that's where I wanted to do. And just coming out with tonight, that was just the same mindset as any other game that I've been in. Daniel, we haven't spoken to you since you absorbed that hit. It looked mm -hmm. tough as I mean, painful. Yeah. Uh, how how serious did the, did the concussion symptoms feel, and, and how tough is it to – to remain patient when you face an injury like that? Um, with me, for sure, patience is 
just something that this year I've gotten better at because any other year I probably would have tried to rush through it just because of just wanting to be back on the floor. So patience has gotten better when it comes to just like major injuries like that. But the symptoms were crazy. You know, I really couldn't, you know, withstand any light noise or in all honesty, I really couldn't withstand anything, you know. Um, but, you know, I had the right people taking care of me. Got a lot of sleep, most definitely. And I'm back now. So we're good to go. <laughs> It was a career high four blocks for Bilal as someone mm -hmm. who blocks a lot of shots yourself. Yep. What have you thought about his ability as a rim protector? Oh, it's it's great because he's growing as a player, uh, game in, game out. You know, he's showing what he can do on the offensive end, but he's most definitely showing what he can do on the defensive end. So, you know, the sky's the limit for young Bilal. What was it like having Daniel Gafford back out there? Oh, it was good having Gafford back, obviously. Um excuse me, his presence. Um in the paint um, is, I mean, huge for us. Um, just his fight, um, his grit, um, big for us. And obviously, you don't, I mean, you don't want to see anybody injured. Uh, so that was kind of a uh, kind of a freak incident. Um, him with the concussion. So it's good to see him back. Um, didn't didn't miss a beat, and you know, fought fought Jok uh, Jokic hard all night and. Um, yeah, so it was huge for us, and I'm um, a good tandem uh, to have him and him and Bag for sure. Four blocks for Bilal to career high. Mm -hmm. uh, what have you seen from him as a rim protector? Um, I mean his his length, like his wingspan, is crazy. Um, he's got good timing. Um, knows when to when to release um, and go meet it at the rim. Um, and so yeah, that's huge. And a lot of times he's guarding guards. So he kind of has the the size of the height advantage um, on on them, and it's just it's big for for us. And um, he has tremendous defensive instincts, um, and and it's huge. He'll only get better, and which is kind of scary because uh, he's already a, a tremendous defender. So um, yeah, I didn't know how many blocks he had tonight, but it looked like he was blocking a shot every every other possession. So. Um, yeah, it's big time, and, and that's a, a, a great, you know, skill and trait to have for sure. Ty, as a guard, how hard is it to defend against an offense like that where they run a lot of their plays through a center mm -hmm. at the top of the key? Yeah, it's different. It's super unique. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's it's difficult, you know, just because it's it's different. Like you said, it's unique. Um, one of the best passes in the league, um, and, and being that he's a center, it's a it's a complete different wrinkle that you, you you know you don't see a whole lot so um it's tough even and everyone obviously knows the player he is but he still manages ways to find different passes and different reads that um you know you take away first second option he's still getting to his third option with without hesitating and it's um so it's tough but they do a great job playing off of him um you know they got shooting they got um athletes um, him and you know Jamal, great one two one two tandem. So um, it's it provides a, a great challenge. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, it's super unique, um, and he's just extremely unselfish. And I think that's what really makes it um, so hard to you know to stop. Uh, when the trade went down for Bagley, mm -hmm. um, you talked about that you had a connection with him a little bit through the brotherhood, the yep. Duke brotherhood. Yeah. Uh, but that was before you got to play, play an actual game with him. Now yep. that three games under your belt, how's that connection going? It seems like you guys have had a little bit of spark in the pick and roll yeah. already. Uh, how's, how's that going? It's going great. It's going great. Um, yeah, we got a we got a connection for sure on the pick and roll game, and we're working um, every day, talking through a bunch of a bunch of different stuff, um, and just working to to continue to, to continue to build on that. Um, and yeah, that's something that we're definitely going to use uh, to our advantage. Um, so yeah, glad glad he's here.